Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to be reviewing the GPD G1 eGPU, and it's the 2024 version. And we're going to talk about how it connects to the Asus ROG Ally X. And we're using the internal screen right now, but it does both internal and external screen. And I'll show you what the differences are. But this is a really cool piece of tech, and I thought I would talk about it today because I've never done an eGPU before. So today is going to be a little bit fun for me because I've never done eGPU and I tried to set up my own using an RTX 3080 that I have with an ADT UT3G eGPU and you kind of had to get your own power supply, you had to get your own graphics card and put it all together in this mishmash Frankenstein. I tried to find a case or an enclosure for it and I didn't really find a good one and so I thought it would be the best option for me. Turns out it was just a lot more hassle than I was looking for. This is so much easier. This is powered off of the Radeon RX 7600M XT GPU, and it acts as a docking station as well. There is an HDMI 2.1 port for 4K 120 output, USB 4 port with 65 watts of power, two display ports for multi-monitor support, and more. I think the only thing missing for me is an ethernet port. That was the one thing that I was looking for and I'm like, I wish I could just have an ethernet port and that would be it. That would be a perfect docking station and eGPU solution, everything in all in one. But it doesn't have one and I'm not sure if that's something that's normally included in eGPU. Would like to see it next year if that's possible, but either way, that's the only thing missing in my opinion. It's important to note as well that this does support Oculink, but the ROG Ally X does not have an Oculink port, so I can't test that out. Oculink would make the results a lot better than what you're going to see today though. So just keep that in mind that if you do have an Oculink device, you'll see a lot better. Special thanks to WhatGeek for providing this device for review today. They have it for sale for $699 US dollars on their website, and I'll leave a link in the description to where you can purchase it. Okay, so once again, I am new to eGPUs, so if you are new to eGPUs, this is probably a perfect video for you because you can learn as I learned to go through it. But the general idea is actually very simple. You have the eGPU here, which has the GPU inside and just an enclosure with some ports and all that. You have a Thunderbolt 4 cable. That goes directly into the Asus ROG Ally X on the left side because that is the Thunderbolt 4 port. And then you turn on the GPU and then you turn on the ally and off you go and you can play some games and you get some boosts and benefits even on the internal screen before even connecting it to an external monitor or anything like that. So essentially you are supercharging your device. You are adding the graphics card power of the Radeon that is in here and putting it on the Ally X and saying, hey, we're gonna make this so much better and so much faster and a lot more frame rates and all of that fun stuff. And if you're wondering how big of a performance jump it is, just wait, we'll get there. Now, the Ally X needed a bunch to get going. There was a bunch of uninstalling drivers, installing new drivers. It's not difficult, but it's not easy either. It is somewhere in the middle. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a setup guide on how to actually do this for your Ally X. We're on a bit of a roll. I don't want to stop it for setting it all up. But if you're interested in setting this all up for yourself afterwards, keep an eye out on the end of the video and we'll have all that there. So like I mentioned, I think what was immediately cool to me is that all of this worked on the internal screen and I saw a bit of a bump already. And I instantly thought of, well, why don't I just keep this on my coffee table, get a longer Thunderbolt 4 cable, and then just lie down on my couch and play games and get a boost because that's exactly what this device does. And all I have to do is have one cable to my Ally X. So it's the same as how I've been charging it on my couch, except I get a boost included with that charge. So why wouldn't that work? And well, the answer as to why that doesn't work is two different things. The first is the fan noise, but the second is there is a massive performance loss when you use the internal screen as opposed to an external screen. So let's talk about the first reason and the fan noise. So this eGPU has two different modes. There is a 60 watt mode and there's a 100 watt mode. They call the 60 watt mode a quiet mode, but the 100 watt mode puts it into a airplane 747 loudness of noise. It's really loud. And you're going to see the differences between the two in frame rate soon, but the general idea, I think, at the end of this video is just keep it in 60 watt mode. Unless you really don't care about the noise and you have it as a desktop replacement, but for me, I kind of like the 60 watt mode for what you're getting. 
So let's do a very quick test and I'm gonna show you the difference in 60 watt mode and 100 watt mode under maximum load in both scenarios so you can hear the fan noise. So I think you can see why this can't be a coffee table device in really either mode, in my opinion. My wife would kill me and it would not pass the wife test. So just keep that in mind. I think 60 watt mode is the way to go, but you have the option to go to 100 watt. Okay, and so now let's look at some performance differences because the other reason my idea doesn't work is because less performance when you're using the internal screen. And you might be wondering how much less, and we'll talk about that now. So I have five different scenarios no eGPU connected, eGPU connected in 60 watt and 100 watt mode in the internal screen, and then eGPU connected in 60 watt and 100 watt mode with an external screen. Yeah, baby, we are doing graphs today and I have no other way to do this, so we're gonna do graphs. For settings, I am actually using the exact same resolutions and graphic settings and all of that that I was playing these games on. So I didn't change any of that because that's how it works without the eGPU connected and I want to see how much of a boost it would give in the same scenario. And so let's move through a few different test games here. First up is Cyberpunk 2077 and so you can see right off the bat on the internal screen alone, the benefit is actually really small. It's 20-ish percent or so with the 60 watt mode and 30-ish percent with the 100 watt mode. And I mean, that's good, don't get me wrong, but it's nothing to write home about and probably nothing to spend 700 US dollars on. But then you look at the external screen jumps. That is a double frame rate here and you could easily connect this to a 144 hertz monitor and continue on as you've been playing and instead of being at 83 FPS, you are suddenly at 155 or 174. That is a massive jump. And this also doesn't include the improvements to 1% lows and frame stability and all of that sort of thing. There is so many different benefits here, it is crazy. So let's take a look at another game here with F1 2024. And it is basically just an exact repeat of what we saw with Cyberpunk. Small increases if you use the internal screen, but it is massive if you're going to use the external screen. I honestly wasn't expecting jumps like this when I first tested this, and I'm excited to see what this can do. This is actually really crazy and really cool if you're gonna have this as a desktop replacement. So everybody loves Time Spy for some reason, and so here's some numbers to look at. The scores basically triple from no eGPU to 100 watt external from the eGPU. I gotta be honest, these numbers are always meaningless to me, but for those that like to see these numbers, the Ally X's power levels are over 9,000. Look, we could do a million games and keep showing you all the different benefits here, but the general idea is simple. The GPDG1, or really pretty much any eGPU, is gonna give a super powered charge to your Ally X. And so if you're going to be docking your Ally X often, if you dock it to your monitors often, to your TV and all of that, I think it might be beneficial for you to look at one of these eGPU solutions like the GPDG1 because you'll just get a benefit to doing so and it is so much better if you can swing the cost of course but I think it's a big benefit here and this might even be better than some of your computers that you have at home. I don't know what graphics card you're using at home but maybe this combination is better than what you are currently using and so this is better for you. There's a lot of different scenarios here I think it's really cool, it's really slim, it's not bulky, it's a really good solution is my takeaway, I guess. So as promised, I'm gonna leave it off here with the complete setup guide on how I got this all working because I saw a lot of confusion online as to just not being able to get it to work and all that sort of thing. So I'm gonna just walk you through what I did to get it all to work perfectly. And for anybody else that isn't interested in that, appreciate you watching. There's a link in the description in case you wanna purchase this and we'll move on. Now, since we're going to be installing the AMD drivers instead of the Asus ones, we need to turn off automatic updating of drivers in Windows. So head to Control Panel, System, Advanced System Settings, System Properties, Hardware, Device Installation Settings, and make sure that this is set to No. If you skip this, Windows will update the driver that we're about to install to the old one and it basically reverses everything that we're about to do. Trust me, it happened. So don't skip this part. 
So next up, we need to uninstall our current drivers. But first, we want to download the new drivers that we'll be using. So head to the AMD driver website, search for 7840U, and you want the full size download, not the auto detect. Now let's grab DDU, which is a driver uninstaller from Guru3D, and we'll boot the X into safe mode to do what we need to do. Okay, so remember that keyboard suggestion? Well, you're gonna need it now. Head to Settings, System, Recovery, Advanced Startup, and Restart Now. Your X is going to reboot and then choose Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, Startup Settings, and Restart. You'll then see a list of options and you need to enter a number. And the number that we need is four. So use your keyboard to enter four. This is all going to look really ugly on screen and I apologize, but I can't use a capture card in safe mode. So we're gonna to need to extract the DDU zip file and then open it, run the EXE to extract the program and then run the program. Click OK and then close the window. And now from the side, select GPU and make sure that it says AMD. Then run the first option to clean, delete, and restart. When it is all done, you'll be restarted into the Ally X normally. Head over into your C drive and delete the AMD folder. Now go and open the driver EXE file that we downloaded from the AMD website. And it's going to try installing and it is going to fail, but don't worry, that's fine. You need to head to Device Manager, find the Microsoft Basic Display, and right click it. Go to Update Driver, browse my computer for drivers, let me pick from a list of available drivers on my computer, select the display, then Have Disk at the bottom, click Browse, and head to the C drive, and we're going to go to AMD, AMD Software Installer, Packages, drivers, display, wt6a underscore inf, and you're going to see a .inf file. Select it. You'll see a big list of drivers now. Scroll down to Radeon 780M graphics. It has to be the one that says graphics at the end. Click OK and let it install the driver. Once that's done, browse to the same spot in File Explorer. So AMD, AMD Software Installer, Packages, Drivers, Display, WT6A underscore INF, and you're going to see a folder there that starts with a B and some numbers. Go inside and you want to open the CCC2 underscore install dot EXE, and that's going to help you install Adrenaline. Once that's done, close it and then reboot your X. I had to go in and I had to change the VRAM to auto in Armory Crate, otherwise everything would crash. But once I did that, no issues playing really any game. One also important thing to keep in mind with an eGPU is how to start the device. First, you want to have the eGPU plugged into power and the Thunderbolt 4 cable plugged into your device. Remember again, this is the left slot on the ROG Ally X since that's the eGPU port. Then you turn on the eGPU, and then you turn on the device. If you do this any other way, games are going to crash, things aren't going to work, and everything just explodes. So do this the right way. And with that, you are all set to use an eGPU with your ROG Ally X. Enjoy the boost. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro handhelds and ROG Ally Xs. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.